Chua, Watashi Wa, Stephen Chin, this, um, Director, Oracle Technology Network. Um, I'm going to talk about Raspberry Pi. Who has Raspberry Pi? Oh, good. Yeah. So everyone else should buy one. How how expensive in Japan? I think six thousand yen, maybe. Japanese yen, yeah, six thousand. Yeah, so it's inexpensive. You know, most folks can afford it, and it's um, very good for doing hardware prototyping and embedded applications. So I'm going to show you how you can run Java and specifically Java nine on it. Um, so I need some help with my presentation. We're gonna we're gonna build a racetrack. Um, Takashi, can you show the tape? And Sebastian, you mind opening up the robot to show it on the? It's under your back, yeah. The right there. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna build a track for the robot. Um, and the robot can distinguish between white and black. So it has a um, um, ultraviolet light sensor. It shines light at the ground, and then it reflects, and then it can detect between these two colors. So, um, you know, make a base track with this, and then put a line down the center. Um, and, you know, very simple. So you can do round corners, not too tight. You can do 45 degree angles. Oh, here's the line follower we're going to use. And then the sensors on the bottom. These detect white and black. Um, the only thing you be need to be careful of is no um, right angle. Um, so if it sees a right angle, it will keep going straight. But at 45 degree angles, fine. And smooth curve is fine. Okay, who wants to help build the track? Volunteer. We need three, three people. Ah, one, Doza. Yeah, it's anywhere you like. It's okay. Um, so try try to only use about no more than half the tape. So um, when you're doing it, yeah, it's heavy. Where's our third volunteer? We need three. Yeah, thanks. When you're doing it, um, try not to use more than half. Okay. You less is okay. More no. I think help him with that white one, it's hard. One person holding and the other person turning is good. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good. All right, so they're gonna, they're gonna build us a track. While they're working on the track, let me talk a little bit about um, Raspberry Pi and Java technology. Okay, so Raspberry Pi is a very useful embedded computer. Um, it has a port for output display, HDMI. It has um, USB ports, the latest one has four ports, ARM processor. Um, probably the most interesting thing is the GPIO pins right here. So the GPIO lets you connect like um, temperature sensors, I squared C sensors, um, relays, switches, buttons. So this is this is really what makes the Raspberry Pi useful because it's a very low power board, 
you can hook a bunch of devices to it and you can make interesting IoT projects for the Internet of Things. So um, Yuchi Sakuraba talked a lot about Java 9. Probably he did a better job than me. <laughs> but let me... Let me highlight some of the main features that apply to embedded development. Um, so the first big one is just the Java 9 module system. So this lets you, it the, lets the Java runtime be split up into smaller parts so you can only use the pieces of it that you need. It lets you split your own application up into modules. Um, so it's very useful for embedded devices where you have limited storage space, limited memory. Oh, it's going to go under the table. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, another th feature which is useful is modular runtime images. So this lets you do... Um, smaller, more compact file format than normal jar files. Um, JLink is very useful, so this lets you link together your application. Um, and then you can build a single runtime, which includes the class files or the modules you need to run your application plus the Java runtime. Oh, hi. hi. See you guys very fast. Um, so you can include a optimized runtime just for your application. And, um, you know, J shell as well. So Sakuraba san talked about this. We're going to try J shell. Did you show a J shell example? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to try it on the Raspberry Pi. We're going to actually run a little J shell example on the Raspberry Pi. And the last one is HTTP2 client. So, um, a lot of people run web servers on the Raspberry Pi as a way of interacting. And so you can run a web server um, using the latest HTTP2 protocol using Java 9 on the Raspberry Pi. So here's all the different embedded boards that are available. And um, let me fix this. Hold on. Okay. How's that? So you can see that Java 8 supports all the different Raspberry Pi boards. Java 9 only supports ARM version 7 and higher. So if you have a older Raspberry Pi, like an A or a B or a B plus, um, even the new Raspberry Pi Zero, which has an ARM version 6 chip in it, then you should continue running Java 8. They're taking advantage of some new compiler commands, which give better performance, but they're only available on ARM version 7 and higher. So if you want to run Java 9, you need a Raspberry Pi 2 or a Raspberry Pi 3, or an x86 board, like a Galileo or an Edison. This guy has a Raspberry Pi 2 on it. Um, so I upgraded him so he can run Java 9 now. Another gotcha is the garbage collector, G1. is also not supported on embedded devices. So use a, use a synchronous garbage collector. It will give you better performance anyway. G1 is really better for when you need pauseless garbage collection and you have extra processing resources to throw at it. Um, but in general, G1 is a um, higher CPU collector than the other ones. Also, no JavaFX support. You can use Swing and AWT or you can use the Gluon JavaFX distribution. So Gluon is a company which makes um, Android and iOS ports of JavaFX. And they also release an embedded port as well. Keep keep asking my phone, Sebastian. Thanks. So um, all the applications I'm going to show you with visual UIs, they, they run on um, Android, they run on iOS, and they also run on embedded devices like Raspberry Pi in addition to desktop. Um, and a good way of building these applications is using Scene Builder, which is a drag and drop UI. 
So um, the first the first example is a coffee demo. Can you um, put the um, image back on, Sebastian? I turned it off because one of the slides needed it. The first demo is a coffee demo, and um, I'm going to show you the application. This is written in JavaFX um, Code Lounge, OTN Code Lounge. We use this at a bunch of conferences like Oracle Code. So we used Oracle Code Tokyo and Java Day Tokyo. We used it at Java One San Francisco, um, a whole bunch of other places. And the user interface runs on cell phone. So this is the JavaFX app running on my phone. And it also runs on the Raspberry Pi. So pass this around and you can try clicking. You can choose the coffee type, choose the coffee strength. Um, this setup has a Raspberry Pi hooked up to a scale, three relays for each of the grinders, another relay for the water kettle, a temperature probe to measure the temperature of the water, get it to the perfect temperature, and a couple screens hooked up over HDMI. And you can see the same application on there runs on the um, Raspberry Pi as well. So this is using JavaFX and specifically the Gluon port of JavaFX. So you scan the application. Um, this is the App Store link if you want to try it yourself. Um, in the application, you can put in an order. And when you click Submit, it gives you back a QR code. And then finally, um, the Raspberry Pi has a Pi camera, which can scan the QR code. And then when you scan the QR code, you um, it'll go through the Java Java program to show the barista how they should make your make you coffee. Another example that we use at some of the demos is this Carbide 3D router. So it's a it, it's a three-axis router, which can cut through plastic, wood, aluminum. Um, we were using it to cut plastic, acrylic plastic, and so you can cut different shapes out. Um, who, who has the phone now? Phone, 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 phone. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so click, click back. Click, no, no, on, on the UI, click back at the top. Yeah, back. And then click on the, the right one. Yeah, that. So that's this application for drawing shapes. You can try drawing with your finger. Yeah. Well, you, it has to be a closed closed path. Uh, click reset. R click reset at the bottom. Reset and try again. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, see the red? Overlap. But you get the idea. Um. So this lets you draw shapes. And then these are the cutouts we did at Java 1. You can see. It let, yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, submit. And you get the QR code. The QR code, um, maybe the REST service is having a bad day. <laughs> the QR code lets you scan on the device. Yes, yeah, so I'll pass around. Let's you scan on the, the um, QR code can be scanned on the Raspberry Pi hooked up to the 3D printer or the CNC router. And the CNC router controls, the Raspberry Pi controls the CNC routi, router using G code commands over serial. So this gets a serial connection to the um, um, Gerbil controller. Um, here's an example of some G code commands which will um, do the initialization for the um, the, C the CNC router. So it moves it to the um, corner here, this little thing. It tests the length, and then it moves it back and gets ready for cutting. And um, this code actually does the cutting here. So each of these are G code commands, like um, M3S9000 means set the spindle speed to 9000 RPMs. Um, these commands are for moving, so it goes in a loop, and it follows the path which you draw, and cuts out, cuts out exactly what path you drew. Um, and then you know this stops the spindle rotation, homes it, and then ends the program. Um, and then it uses 
a library called Universal G Code Center to send the commands. And then um, this is the same sort of process, right? So you start with the code lounge app, you draw a shape. So wh what shape is this? What does this look like here? Oh, oh. here's a hint. <laughs> okay, so my artwork's not very good, seem to say. Um, and then you scan on the machine, and it'll carve it out for you using a Raspberry Pi hooked up to the um, CNC router. Okay, so last thing, we're going to actually run this guy, this little demo. Um, can you pass my laptop back? I need the CNC. I need the um, Wi-Fi router, Sebastian. So this is um, constructed using the make block. Um, construction set. You can think of it like Legos for um, big kids. Um, it's a lot more s sturdy than normal Lego bricks. It allows you to construct different mechanical devices. So they have a bunch of examples of um, you know different things you can build with this on the on the website. So I'm just built a basic tank with um, tire treads. And we're going to see if we can't get this guy to, um, you know, follow the line using the sensor here. These are the um, two sensors, which can sense black and white. Um, here we have a proximity sensor, a distance sensor. So this can tell you exactly how far something is from it. Um, and then I, I also have an infrared sensor for remote control. Um, so to build this, these are all the parts you need. The make block starter robotics kit, a Raspberry Pi, which a bunch of you already have. Um, I'm using their Uno shield, and then the motor driver and the line follower. And um, the code is fairly simple. So you just need to, um, I'm using the Pi4j library. Um, it's written by Robert Savage, and it's a good library for controlling GPIO from Java. Um, and the algorithm is super, super simple. So you have the left and the right sensor, which are just Boolean variables. If they're both white, then we're lost. So we just keep going straight. So if you have a 90 degree angle, it'll go black, 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 white. And then it's, it keeps going, so it gets lost. But if you see um, two black, you know you're on the line, so that's good. So keep going the same direction. If you see a black and a white, then we're off the right side of the line, so we turn left. And if you see a white and black, we're off the left side of the line, so you turn right. So hopefully it will follow, right? Okay, so we should give it a try. See how your track works with the line follower. Um, so I am hopefully connected. to the Raspberry Pi, we'll see. Uh, pi at line Pi. So I'm going to open up an SSH connection. OK, so now we're, we're logged into the Raspberry Pi. And we can now do run Java. So now we're running Java on the Raspberry Pi via an SSH connection. And you can see we're running an early access version of Java 9. Um, so I'm going to run JShell on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so this is a Raspberry Pi 2. It's not the fastest in the world. You can see JShell takes a couple seconds to start up. But once it gets started, then we can actually um, execute some some simple commands. Hello. Hiroshima jug. Okay, so our Raspberry Pi says hello. 
Um, but I think it's more interesting to actually run a real IDE. So we're going to switch to IntelliJ. Um, this has the same code you saw earlier. So like this is the, the same algorithm, right, for following a line. Um, also, here's the code for the the distance sensor, the ultrasonic sensor. So we'll give it a try running. It's all, the whole program's only 200 lines of code, and that includes some stuff we're not using, like the um, remote control. And you guys might want to get up. It's easier to see. So feel free to come forward. OK, so hopefully, if it comes to an obstacle, it stops maybe. <laughs> so you see when it hits an obstacle, it should hopefully stop. And then um, this this will t make it change direction. So you can see. So let's give it a try. Which which side of the track do I start on? This side? And um, we need somebody to be the end obstacle. Sebastian, you look dangerous <laughs> stand stand in in the way yeah very good okay so let's try uh oh oh all right so we've completed it good job sebastian who's our who are our track builders track builder uh, one, two, three. All right, give them a round of applause. Good job on the track. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> autonomous. Okay, so this is one example of um, you know different things you can do with the Raspberry Pi. Did anyone come to the um, night hacking tour last year in Hiroshima? Okay, do you, do you guys remember what project I showed last year? Okay, so <laughs> this one here. <laughs> So this this is a uh, maybe you can describe it in Japanese. Yeah, Super Mario. What's what's the Japanese name for Super Mario? Is the same? Same. Okay, that's good. Some sometimes they switch the names of video games, like um, Mega Man. Is different. Mega uh, Rock Rock Man. Yeah, so sometimes they when they translate to the U.S., they randomly switch the name. Um, this is the line follower. This is um, a coffee, a simplified coffee demo setup you can try. These are all projects in the book, um, and it tells you how to build it, gives you code examples. All the code is freely available on GitHub as well. Can you can you kill me? Um, and then um, this is an example of a magic hat with um, an RFID sensor, so you can tell different cards. Um, and all these are examples in Raspberry Pi with Java programming the Internet of Things. So, you know, try try different projects. Um, hopefully you get some ideas on things you can do with your Raspberry Pi. And then you should definitely try Java 9. So um, thanks very much for coming to the Oracle Code Japan tour and spending a very long afternoon with us. Um, but hopefully you learned something interesting from um, Takashi and um, Yuichi and Sebastian. And um, thank you very much for coming this afternoon.